everyone, welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Ardila Inc and in today's video I'm going to be talking about couples and finances. So if you're interested in the topic, stay tuned. So before starting with the video, I just have to say I've just spent the last 40 minutes trying to figure out why my audio wasn't showing on the previous recording that I did of this video because I had already started recording it. I bought a little microphone thingy that I thought was recording me the entire time but I guess it wasn't so I was trying to google it right now going through the Amazon reviews because I bought it on Amazon and I just could not figure it out and I already threw away the box and the manual and everything and I still couldn't find any answers I don't know if I'm gonna be able to return it or if I'm just doing something wrong but I guess I'll just Google about it a little bit more tomorrow. But anyways, going back to the video, the topic for today is gonna be finances and couples. And I think more than anything, it's new couples. Couples that are not married and with kids that have been together for many, many, many years. But more like my situation where I've only been with my current boyfriend, um, I should say fiance, for the past two years and we combined part of our finances very early on I think we just happened to trust each other based on our background when it came to finances and relationships and that sort of thing before I met my fiance whose name is Dennis and I'm just gonna say his name because I don't want to keep saying fiance boyfriends a little bit longer than that so before I met Dennis I don't think I would have ever considered combining my finances so quickly with someone unless I was already married to them but like I was saying we just happen to have a lot of trust for each other almost right away but even though we do have some combined categories when it comes to our personal finances we I think are pretty independent from each other we do pay bills together we pay the, our rent together um, just as of last month we put our savings together but I think most of the time we keep our finances kind of separate from each other. So the first thing I want to talk about is our general budget. We don't sit down every month or every two months to discuss how we're going to be spending every penny of our salaries. We both already know the fixed expenses that we have to contribute towards our household, like general bills, rent, that sort of thing. So we already know that. So there's no need to keep bringing it up. I think we're both very responsible so neither one of us is gonna go out and buy $1,000 worth of product or anything like that without at least mentioning it to the other person. Not because we have to but if we're excited about something that we want to purchase we'll probably share it with each other just to share it and if each other has thoughts on what the other person is planning on purchasing we'll obviously voice them but that doesn't mean that the other person can just buy it if they want to so in summary the plan that we plan our budget is very easy going and chill we just know the expenses that we both share we make sure that we are gonna be paying those I don't think either one of us has ever been behind on anything like that so I think we're good to go in that part as long as we are like contributing to what we have to contribute we don't really like feel the need to sit down and police each other a little bit too much when it comes to how we're spending everything that we earn so the second category that we share as a couple in our finances is bills everybody pays bills and for us what works best is to just simply pay everything in half everything from streaming services to power to water to rent since in the relationship i'm the one who's a little bit more detail and i really like to be looking at my expenses at my budget at my credit card bills almost on a daily basis I am the one who has the job of paying all the bills every month and then once the bills are paid, I charge Dennis for his half through Venmo. There's three main reasons why I decided to do this this way. Number one, I use credit cards for absolutely everything that I do unless what I need to do doesn't accept a credit card, for example, a rent. 
Now the reason why I pay with a credit card is because I get cash back for any expenses that I make on certain credit cards. So for example, I tend to use my Chase 1.5% cash back on everything unless another card offers more for a specific category. So for bills, it makes a lot of sense, at least to me, to pay with credit cards because bills are expenses that you have to make no matter what every single month. So might as well try to get some cash back out of those. The second reason why we decided that I would be paying all the bills was because I usually have everything in automated mode. I make sure that all my bills are connected to my credit card and the bill just charges my car automatically. I don't ever have to think about it and all of my credit cards I paid in full every single month so I always have the entire credit card limit to pay my bills. And the limit is not even close to what the bill of anything combined would be. Even if I didn't pay my credit card for like a whole year and all my bills start like piling up on my one Chase card, let's say, I would still never be over the limit. Of course, that's something I would never do because you do start having to pay interest if you don't pay your credit card in full every month. So of course, there's no reason to do that. But in case something happened where I happen to forget that I have to pay my credit card, at least my bills are still getting paid and we're not running into the chance of having our power cut off, for example. And that brings me to my third reason, the third reason why I wanted to pay for all of these directly and then I would charge Dennis afterwards is because I wanted to ensure that we never miss a due date on our bills. Missing a due date on a bill could cost two things. One is to get penalized and having to pay extra fees for being late on your bill. And the second thing is for your service to be temporarily suspended. We of course don't want that to happen, so we thought it would be best for me to take care of those sort of bills. An additional thing that I think helps me a lot to have everything automated with my credit cards and my bills is that I don't have to keep track of a lot of due dates because a lot of bills, a lot of credit cards, a lot of different payments that we have to make every month, that's a lot of due dates to keep track of. As opposed to if all of my bills are automatically being charged to my credit card, they're getting paid on time, then all I have to take care of is making sure that I pay my credit card before the due date is up. That means less due dates for me to keep track of at the end of the month. Now the third thing that we split within our household is of course rent. Everybody pays rent and we do the exact same thing that we do with our bills which is to split the payment in half and each one of us takes care of half of the rent. On top of that, I also consider within our rent anything that we need to spend on just maintaining our household or fixing something that breaks or adding new things to the house to make it look nicer, or to make it more comfortable for each other. Like for example, when we bought our new couch and our new bookcase, we of course split the payment in half. But I personally think that this kind of purchases need to be discussed and agreed on before even going and buying the things that you want to add to your household, especially when it's a big item or a very expensive item. So just to give you an example, Dennis really wanted to buy a plasma TV for our apartment and I personally didn't really want to do that. I think the first reason was because I thought that the TV that we already had was more than decent and I already liked how it looked and the second reason was because I just didn't want to spend any extra money on something that wasn't really necessary because we already had a TV that worked just fine. He had had that TV for many years already and he really wanted to upgrade it to something better. So even though I didn't really want to participate on the purchase necessarily, he still went and bought the TV that he really, really wanted. He actually got a pretty good deal on it. He bought it during Black Friday, so it wasn't that expensive at all, or at least not as expensive as I imagined it would be for that kind of TV. And I actually really liked the TV at the end. It didn't get as hot as the previous one. It was way more advanced as far as technology goes, and we could use it in a much easier way. But because it was a decision from Dennis to purchase the TV, then he of course paid for the entire thing himself. 
Now, if the same thing happened where I wanted to buy something that he didn't necessarily think it was necessary or something that he didn't really think we should be spending the money on or that he should be spending the money on because it's not something that he wants to necessarily purchase right now. And of course, if it's not something that's gonna bother him being here in the apartment, then I should be the one who pays for the entire thing because it's my decision to purchase it, not his. And I think that really creates a lot of respect around each other. There are things that maybe you like that your partner doesn't necessarily like as much, but as long as what you're bringing into the house, into your apartment, into the shared space, it's not something that's gonna bug the other person then I think this should be fine everybody should be able to purchase what they really enjoy what they really want as long as they discuss it with the other person and they're willing to pay for it themselves completely because it's something that they're the ones who want to spend the money on not the other person now our next category is groceries now with food it's the same thing we technically want to split everything in half I'm someone who in principle likes to do things in a uniform manner, mainly because I enjoy having a routine, having things follow a certain pattern instead of things being scattered all over the place. So because that's how I am, I am a little bit more strict when it comes to splitting payments because I really want us to feel like we're both putting our fair share of the deal when it comes to everything that we spend on. So usually when we do a very big grocery shopping haul, we go together because I make a list of things that I think we're all going to need um, and it's always helpful to have two people at the grocery store. We tend to go to different supermarkets within one day. Usually that happens on a Saturday or Sunday. We go to Costco, Food for Less. Whole food sprouts, whatever we need to go, we go and try to purchase everything on the same day. So it's usually me who pays at the cash register for all the groceries. Pretty much for the same reason as what I mentioned for the bills category. I have a lot of credit cards and I have a credit card in particular that gives me more cash back than normal for grocery purchases. So might as well use that card to get at least a little bit of money back for groceries that we were gonna buy anyways. Once we get home, I'll add up every receipt that we got in throughout that day and then I'll split the payment at the end of the day. My fiance, on the other hand, most of the time just uses his debit card to purchase anything. So when he goes to a grocery store on his own, he'll pay with his debit card, but he won't get any cash back because usually debit cards don't really give any cash back for using them. The other thing that sometimes I don't like is that he'll go to the grocery store and I don't think he either wants me to pay for my half or he just forgets. I think that's also a big reason why I prefer to pay for everything and then charging him for it afterwards is because I'm the kind of person who doesn't forget that sort of thing. And it's not at all because I have a better memory because for sure he has a far better memory than I do. But because I check my accounts so much, I know when there are payments that came through my credit card that were supposed to be split between the two of us. So when that happens, I'll recheck my Venmo, make sure that I already charge him, and if I didn't, then I'll charge him for it. I think Dennis, on the other hand, is way more chill, relax about that sort of thing because I don't think for him it's a big deal that I pay him for my half which is a very nice thing for him to do to not like want to enforce me to pay every single time but at the same time I want to be fair with him and I don't want him to be spending money that I should be also putting my half off. So in summary, I just prefer to pay for grocery bills myself as well with a credit card that gives me more cash back for just purchasing groceries and then I try to charge him at the end of the day or the week. Now for going out, for going out to eat or having a drink or that sort of category we are not nearly as strict when it comes to splitting payments we'll for sure still try to follow that philosophy of splitting everything in half but we'll also give each other room to treat each other he can treat me for coffee one day i can take him for a donut another day maybe he'll take me out to dinner and then maybe the next day i'll take him out for brunch so we don't do that all the time, but I think we give each other room to do it a little bit more often than other categories where we try to split everything always in half. But I would say 
70% of the time we do still split the payments and again I have a card that gives me about 4% cash back on restaurants so I want to use that card to pay for all of those sort of bills and then we'll split the payment of course this doesn't happen on special events anniversaries birthdays um, Valentine's Day that sort of thing then we'll treat each other it doesn't have to always be him I know some people think that the guy always have to treat the girl for Valentine's Day or for anniversaries I don't think that's the case I think girls should also be treating their boyfriends out to dinner and they should also be trying to plan dates where they are the main contributor financially of the entire event it doesn't always have to be the guy who plans the romantic things for the girl and the girl just receives that so as far as like that goes I do try to split everything that we can but we also like give each other room to treat each other for like special occasions or if we just feel like it if there's like it's not a big deal now the next category I wanted to talk about is debt when it comes to debt we're still very independent from each other I have my debt he has his debt and that's the end of it but we of course we would always help each other out as much as we can for example when I first moved in then it still had a little bit of credit card debt while I was already debt free and I had my emergency fund set in place. So as you all probably know, credit card debt has a lot of high interest rates. So I didn't want him to be spending so much money just paying interest on credit cards that maybe I could just pay off myself and then have him pay me back. So we got together one afternoon and really figured out how we can tackle his debt as fast as we could. And we decided to pay off two of his credit cards with my emergency fund and he would pay me back at a very aggressive amount every single month and we calculated that he would be done paying me in like eight months which he did and then right after that we calculated that he was gonna have one credit card left with the balance but that there was no interest gonna be charged on that card until the following year in July so he finished paying me off in May and then in July I paid off his last credit card where he had an open balance and then that one he paid me off in probably three three and a half months so I was able to help him out with that he still paid all of his debt I didn't pay for any of it because he returned all of the money that I gave him it was just a simple I want to help him save the interest that he otherwise would have had to pay which for credit cards I think the average is probably 23% which is a lot it adds up and it doesn't help you get out of debt as fast as you could now for anybody that's out there please be very careful with doing this I think like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I would have never thought of combining my finances with anybody unless I was already married to them. But I think the more I got to know Dennis, I realized what a responsible, caring, and just very righteous human he was. So I knew that I could trust him with something like this. And I didn't even do this right away. I had the money like before I moved in to perhaps like help him with this but I still waited more than a year to like suggest that option and it wasn't because I didn't trust him before that one year was up it was more because we had not even discussed finances yet I think we were still in the early stages of our relationship so we were a little bit more independent from each other but once we got engaged and we knew that we were always going to be together for the rest of our lives that's when we started thinking big picture what do we want from our lives and for sure what i want for us well, what we both want for each other is to be financially independent at a very early age and this is probably going to be its own video but my mindset my goal is to not have to wait until we're 65 to retire i want to retire as soon as possible and by that I don't mean that I want to retire in five years and then have nothing to do with work for the rest of my life. All I want for each other is to have that peace of mind that we don't have to work for someone or doing something that we don't want to do just for money. But again, going back to how you have to be very careful about doing this, I would suggest that if you're in a relationship 
where you guys have your arguments even if it's not that often but if it happens you know like and it gets kind of heated or if you feel like you have other issues where you're not sure where the relationship is going you're not quite sure what's gonna happen to you guys in 5 10 20 years or if even though you love the person that you're with but some of the background stories that you heard from them maybe include something like well I didn't pay this person or this person loaned me money or I don't talk to this other person because at one point I just never pay her back for this then I don't think it's a good idea for you to get involved financially with that person yet I'm not saying that people cannot change because it definitely happens all the time as people mature as people grow older as people find the right environment and person to be with but unless you're married I don't suggest combining finances or lending money to anybody because let's say you do break up with someone who you just loan money to you probably will never see that money again unless that person happens to be a decent human being who will still pay you back no matter what your current relationship status is or if you notice that they're just not financially responsible that's a big red flag that does not mean that you have to break up with them although I suggest that if you're planning on having a long-term relationship with this person to already have the conversation of hey what are we gonna do with ourselves we have to get into the same page as far as like financial responsibility but other than that you shouldn't really get involved with loaning money to someone who's just not there yet as far as like financial responsibility maybe they just need more time to mature and get to the point where they're gonna be financially independent and they don't have to borrow money from other people etc etc so please be very smart and careful about this sort of situation now the next and last category I wanted to mention when it comes to couples and finances is savings. Until just one month ago, we each other kept our savings separately. I had my own savings, he had his own savings and that was that. But as obviously we're now engaged, we're planning to get married very very soon and we're looking towards our future, we need to already have a plan in action regarding savings. My main goal right now is to save for a house, I mean for a down payment. We live in Southern California, so there's really no way with our average salaries that we're gonna be able to save as much money to just buy our house outright. But at least I wanna get close to more than 20%, if possible, to put down in like the next three years. So for that, we need a very aggressive savings plan because as you probably know, houses here in Southern California are very expensive. So to do this, I open a CIT bank savings account. I believe their current interest on savings account is 2.25%, which is way better than Bank of America or Chase or Citibank, which I believe give you 0.01% or something like that. So now that we put our money together into a joint savings account, due to the higher balance, we're able to get more money out of the interest. I think another positive out of putting our money together is that we keep each other accountable for what we're putting into our joint savings account. The reason being very simple is that we know how much each other has agreed to contribute every month, so we're gonna call each other out like, hey, aren't you supposed to be putting that much? now that you got paid yesterday because we both have a common goal we are both very invested into making this work as much as possible of course the way that i am i'm still keeping tabs as to how much each person is contributing and how much interest we are both gathering as we put more money i just personally believe the more information you write down to note the better it is just for everybody's sake you always want to keep a good grasp of where money is coming from or what it's living for you need to have a purpose for every cent of your money no matter what just get into the habit of noting everything down i don't really write things down that much because i have horrible handwriting and i just get tired when i can write for some reason so i type everything and i have google sheets which i use for all of my finance breakdown in that sort of thing i have two budget videos that i created one for my yearly budget and one for my monthly and weekly budget which i'm gonna link on the description box below so that you can see those videos if you're interested 
So now you heard me talk about everything that we do personally when it comes to joining our finances, joining our money, having common goals when it comes to money. I don't think much is gonna change once we get married because we're already living together, we already love each other very much. I think we're as close as we can be when it comes to sharing our thoughts, sharing everything that crosses our mind, I feel. So I really don't think that we're gonna change a lot of what we're currently doing when it comes to money because it has worked for us so far. Now when we have children, things might change a little bit or a lot I'm not really sure I've never been a mom I've never had kids so I guess we'll see when that happens but for now we're very focused and I think pretty much on track to what our goals have been for the past year anyways guys I really hope you enjoyed this video I had a lot of issues trying to just get started on this video all of my battery packs were out of power so I had to wait until they were all charged I couldn't get the lighting really to work that well and all of my sim cards were full so I had to like figure out a way of move all the files without deleting them because I still need to go through them and then the mic situation was just like the cherry on the ice cream because I almost guys recorded for 20 minutes and then I was like you know what let me take a look at what I've recorded so far just in case and then turns out there's no voice all I could hear was static I was about to be like you know what never mind but no I really wanted to film this video I had everything ready I even put my clothing boxes here as a little setup I mean it's not really anything but it just looks so bare behind me that I was like let me just put a little something something in the back so that at least it's not just my face in a what is this like a yellowish background like it just didn't look that cute so anyways guys I'm very glad if you stuck to the end of the video I really hope that you somehow found something useful out of this maybe saw how other people handle their finances as a couple has kind of shown you how everybody is different and everybody does things their own way and maybe some of the things that I currently do with my partner could work for you as well so if you're in a couple let me know how do you handle your finances maybe you're doing something that I could be doing and that would be very helpful. I'm always open for new advice on how to handle money in a smarter, better way. So if you have anything to suggest, just put it in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new videos like this in the future. Remember, I upload new content every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So with that, see you next time, guys.